Morning, morning, morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Love 500. Welcome back to a new project day. We have just been and collected a new car. The fact that I've collected it might give you a clue as to where it's come from. Let me just quickly show you the bits, bits of the journey uh, and a little bit of film in there where another car was being picked up, not by me, that was going on the back of a trailer, a nice mint green facelift. Uh, but we've driven this car back and it's bellissimo, it seems to be, fingers crossed. I've already named it. This is Project Dicky. <laughs> let's go and let's show you the car. Just uh, it's a little bit, I was being a little bit quiet on the train because obviously there's people around thinking I'm stupid talking to myself. Um, so we are currently at Paddock Wood, just uh, walking from the station to BCA. We have another BCA car, this will be my third car from BCA. Uh, this car is a former Cat N from, it was Cat N in 2019. Quite low mileage. Um, I think it's a trade in from, to a dealer. Um, and obviously dealers don't necessarily want cat cars to sell so they stick them through the auctions so I think I've got a really good deal um, obviously I won't know for sure until we've uh, gone over it um, I have a little bag with me in the bag oh there's a Fiat 500 hello in the bag is um, a bottle of oil a litre of oil uh, it did say on the BCA mechanical report that uh, it was low in oil so I thought I'd bring some with me I'll stop just outside uh, and check it and top it up if necessary uh, so I shall bid you farewell for a minute until we get there uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the car uh, when we get it home that's not my one I hasten to add obviously it's off now Nicky. it's a 63 plate you can see it's white it is you can tell from the chrome bits there it is a lounge it's a 2013 or is it 2000 yeah it's 13 sorry i thought it was a 12 plate it's not it's a 13 plate it's a 2013 lounge it is a former cat n it was cat end in 2019 i believe and it's a really nice one they've made a nice job of it you can see it's had a, a new bumper it's very very slightly different color it's had a new DRL that side, you can see it's new. It's had a new headlight that side, you can see that's new. Don't think the wing's been replaced because it's the same color as the bonnet. As I say, there is a slight difference. It looks awful through the camera. It's not, trust me, it, it, it's never that bad. Um, it's just, yeah, I mean, it does look very, very slightly different, but not like it does through the camera. I, I always have to repeat that because it's often the case. Um, the, again, same this side, wing's not been done. It's very, I say, it's not a damaged car. It's a previously damaged car. So there is very, very, very little wrong with it. So let me give you the, the tour. Uh, and there is a nice little surprise inside as well. Couple of things that we're gonna need replacing. A couple being those, either taking off or replacing because they've faded. I've had ones like that from China in the past and I've seen the cars a couple of years later and they've faded as well. So they don't last those. Uh, but I have got some fresh ones, but because it's got a good condition aftermarket set, which don't line up perfectly, but I think the other side's worse actually, but um, th it's okay. That bit's a bit off, but I'm going to leave them. I'm not going to touch them. I'm going to leave them on. Uh, so damage wise. So the gap's a little bit off here. So we might, we might try and improve on that a little bit. If we can, might be able to push the wing in a little bit potentially uh, just to try and improve on that a little bit bonnet lines up okay overhang the bump the bumper could do with coming out just a touch there again it's a very small thing um probably will put some new number plates on you know me i like to put new number plates on that's all new by the looks of it as well 
So it's had quite a lot of new parts. So rather than uh, fixing old parts like I do, they've put new ones on. Maybe they were past fixing, I suppose. That looks like a brand new badge. That looks as if they're brand new whiskers. And that one's got slight crack. That one looks new. So it, the, the damage was obviously down here somewhere. Um, and they've replaced that everything pretty much this side but that that grill certainly looks new as well uh, right moving around here no damage on the wing as we say we've got a, a faded one of them mirrors are good no damage down here i mean bca marked a couple of marks down on the sill but i can't actually see anything Certainly not on this side, but have a look, there's a bit of mud over it. I mean, it needs a bit of a clean. It's not filthy like they are when you get them from Copart. Um, and I think most of this dirt is where I've just driven it back. But yeah, that seal is fine. Doors okay, quarter panels okay. Roof looks okay. I haven't actually looked yet. I haven't looked inside the boot or anything yet. No service history with it, I don't think. I've got the log book, but that's about it. Um, we have, uh, yeah, I'm going to get some new, yeah, we have that number plates all cracked anyway. So yeah, we'll get some new plates. Rear bumper's all good. It looks like a relatively new exhaust actually, because that sticks out quite, I think that's an aftermarket exhaust, but it looks relatively new, which is a bonus. Moving around this side, no damage here. And they put an arrow down here somewhere as well. Maybe there's some little tiny scratches or something. They are pretty good BCA, I have to say, they mark everything. But yeah, nothing, nothing at all. So I think this is literally just gonna need a bit of a good clean up. It's quite mucky on the inside. Um, before we go on the inside, I'll pop the bonnet and I'll show you under there. Got two surprises actually, one under the bonnet and one inside. Uh, it has unfortunately got the horrible red seats, which might be a uh, minus point. Well, it not might be, it is a minus point, unfortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, we won't worry too much about that at the moment. I'll just, just, while I'm standing here, I'm just gonna stroke my lovely BMW. Gotta stroke it every day. Right, let me, <laughs> let me pop the bonnet and um, I'll show you under the bonnet and show you what other surprise we've got under here, which is a cracker. Right, as this, although this was replaced, it is solid, but we have got a broken tab just there, but it is absolutely solid. That actually looks as, maybe this wasn't replaced then. It looks as, it, or maybe they bought a broken one, one with broken tabs, because that there has been bonded and that bit's missing. Has it had a new front panel? Yes, I think it has. The only reason I know it's had a new front panel is because with a start stop car, you have the sticker just there. Oh look, that's broken. So we'll have to, we'll have to change that. Yeah, that's loose. So that'll have to be changed or repaired. We'll put a repair tab in there. There's nothing wrong with the headlight. So that was probably bonded. Yeah, I think that's been plastic welded rather than bonded, but it's come away. So uh, I might try and do that without taking the bumper off if I can. I might have a go at that. Because if I just take that off and then cut that off, I might be able to get a bracket on there potentially and screwed up by doing it underneath without actually taking it, because obviously I've got to take the bumper off. And apart from that, I don't need to take the bumper off. Uh, yeah, I've got a brand new battery. Unfortunately, it's the wrong battery. Um, it works fine. What's this? What's all this? That's, oh, whatever that is, is loose. And I'm surprised that, that, that bolt is loose. I'm surprised that earth cable never came off. That would have been good if I was driving along. Uh, there's a fuse on there. I think I might know what that is, but we'll cross that in a minute. Um, yeah, I thought first of all, it might be someone might have had a, follow where those wires go, someone might have had a, um, there's a roll of masking tape down there on top of the gearbox. Can <laughs> you see it? Uh, let me get a torch. There you go. You see that? <laughs> roll of masking tape down there, black masking tape. <laughs> someone obviously dropped it and didn't know where it went. Well, that's where it went. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry, I was just looking at other things. So, where are we? Yeah, so, we've got some odd wires here. That needs tightening up. I don't know what that earth's for, but we need to put it back on. Um, coming over to this side, the surprise, um, I haven't tested the aircon actually, because it was quite cold, and as you can see, it's a bit rainy. So I didn't have the aircon on. I didn't try it actually. Um, heat works. 
Uh, the the uh, this, the label over the bolt for the cam belt cover is gone completely. Uh, and again, like we did on one of the other BCA cars, let me get the torch. And as you can see from that Orcs belt, if you can, hopefully you can see, that's new. That is a brand new Orcs belt. So I think we can safely assume that the cam belt has been done on this car as well. So we've been quite lucky recently on these cars. I keep, I keep buying cars that um, cam belt has been done. So that's a bonus. Um, again, I still haven't done the cam belt, of course. Um, and I, w I had intended to do it on this one. And of course, now I don't need to, which is good for me, uh, not good for the channel. And I know a load of you are bursting for me to uh, actually do one. And I'm sort of bursting myself, but now winter's come, puts me off a bit. Uh, well, not winter, it's autumn, but we'll see. When, it need when one needs doing, we'll, we'll tackle it. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty clean under here, actually. Um, the oil was very low. Um, I think I mentioned this on the uh, on the previous footage that I took on the phone when I was en route. Is um, yeah, the the mileage. What is that? Don't know. Chuck it on the floor. Oh, it's dirty. Whatever it is. Um, yeah, the oil was very low, so I, I I now take oil with me when I go to BCA um, in a one litre bottle, uh, and I just top it up each time. And uh, yeah, I, do, I, I wouldn't have wanted to, because I was doing 60, 70 mile an hour coming down the uh, dual carriageway coming back, and I wouldn't want to do that with a very, very low oil. Um, obviously we don't know, there is sometimes a reason why it's a low, low oil. Hopefully it hasn't got an oil leak. Let's have a look at the oil filter. Uh, yeah, it's not a new one, so we'll be servicing it. Uh, we haven't looked in the boot yet, have we? Um, that I can imagine, oh, I bet that's the date when the um, when the cam belt was done. 11, I can't read that. What does that say? It looks like 11.10. I don't know. What do you reckon that says? 11th? Is that the month and year? Is that 11.20? And an H? I don't know. What do you reckon that says? Could be... Or the 11th 2020 don't know don't know what that says it could potentially just be a new a new bonnet couldn't it but i think that's probably um when the cam belt was done because i know some people when they do cam belts do do that on there i've seen it on another car where it's been done on there um but yeah i'm not sure whether that's a new bonnet or not matches in with the rest of the car so possibly not hmm don't know anyway let's uh, let's continue let's have a look in the boot all right let's open the boot it works, which is always a bonus. They always put the mats in the boot in these. Mats probably need replacing. No rear shelf. I didn't order one just in case it was in the boot for some reason. Uh, and we didn't know about it. Uh, I've got an interesting wire there. So I know what that's for. But so we'll, we'll mm, yeah, I know what that is. So I might have to try and redo that in a different way. Yeah. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, let's just have a look under here, see what we've got. Got a spare wheel, it looks like hopefully the locking wheel nut key. We haven't got the insert, but I've got one of those. Ooh, we've got two locking wheel nut keys. Hopefully that means they've uh, they had a spare one rather than it's got two different different ones. What is that? Don't know, but we got the jack. Uh, we got bits and pieces, so um, I say I've got the insert. I've got one of those, so I can put that in. That's not a problem. Uh, yeah, nothing else to write home about. So it, have, I don't know if you've spotted it in the, in the footage. You probably already have. <laughs> two six eight as opposed to two six eight a. Same difference. Uh, yeah. Before we go on the inside, let's uh, let's show you the wheels. So we have almost a brand new tire on that. Can't see what the make is down here. Too dark down there. Yeah, virtually brand new. The wheel's in good condition, no scuffing whatsoever on that one. Come into this one, very, very, very minor scuffing. A good four or five mil on that. And that one's good, that one's okay. Come around to this side. Again, zero scuffing on here, maybe a couple of little tiny bits there. Again, four or five mil. Yeah, that's a good tire. And then that, this one, Oh, again, virtually brand new and no scuffing. So wheels and tyres all in very, very good condition. Love it. So far, so good. 
Right, let's show you the inside. So as you can see, we have the beautiful red interior. Now there was a, something on Copart about marks on the rear seats. Now I have got a set of rear seats in this color. I can't actually see anything. I thought there was gonna be rips or something, but there isn't. It's just dirty, it just needs a wash. No blimmin' service history, which is annoying, but you know what, that, that's because this is a former Cat D, of course, a uh, Cat N, so, uh, of course, uh, well, as, as we know, when you get these cars from salvage, you don't normally get the, get the books with them, which is unfortunately, only one key. Just gonna have a look in there. Put my bag down there. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else down there, except, let's have a look in here, nothing. We'll have a look in the little drop-down compartment. Not that service history would, well actually service history would fit in there, I think. I don't think I've ever found anything in that, in that little compartment. Right, let me show you the other surprise in the car in case you hadn't already seen it. Right, what I don't particularly like is um, this gear knob. Now I think these came off of earlier cars. Uh, I'm not gonna change it, it's not, I was, when I was first got the car, I thought I don't like that, I'm gonna change it, put a normal pull ball one on there, or snooker ball, whatever they are. Um, but I thought, no, nah, let's just leave it. It's not my personal taste, but you got the mile, the gearing on the uh, on the gator there because it's not on the actual top. Um, so we have mileage is low on this. Let me just switch her on. Forty-five thousand five hundred and twenty-five miles. How good is that? And um, we do have a flashing mileage. Uh, and again, I'm sure you've all seen this anyway, but here we go, this is the surprise. We have an aftermarket stereo, the same or very, very similar to the one that I've installed before. Uh, that wiring in the boot was um, a camera, a reversing camera. I haven't tried it, but well, I will try it in a minute, see if it works. Up there, we've got a GPS antenna, which personally I would have stuck um, on the glass or behind here like I normally do. Um, so yeah, the radio reception, when I was driving along, I was trying to tune channels and it wasn't brilliant, I have to say, uh, doing a search. Um, but I think in, oh, it shows, <laughs> like the last one I had, it shows the door open, but it shows the wrong side. Let me shut the door. Funny that. Um, it's a lounge, steering wheel controls don't work. Um, it has got, let me just turn volume down, it has got the input for the, um, what they call it the driving recorder, the uh, dash cam. It's got the input for that. Um, so if we go to FM, so if I do a search, show you, it searches through, it finds occasional station. It doesn't find like capital and things like that. So I think what we need to do is do it manually. It's actually, it's finding more actually now than it did before. Let me see if it finds capital 95.8. Oh, it has. That's funny because it doesn't didn't find that when I was driving around. So it has found capital. Oh, that's good. Uh, I've forgotten how you save it now. Um, is it here? We get rid of press and hold. Yeah, that's it. Um, oh, capital was already programmed in. Yeah, so that is maybe it was just where I was. Didn't have a good reception. Uh, it's got RDS. You can see the RDS logo there. Uh, let's try putting it in reverse and seeing if um, the camera works. Yes, it's up in the air a little bit, but um, yeah, it works. That's good. That is good. Um, yeah, so that's the stereo. So um, when, oh, can't get the sound to go completely off. Uh, dum -dum -dum -dum, trying to not pick it up. I'm gonna tell you what, we're gonna turn it off. So I don't wanna mess up my algorithms. How do you turn it off? That's it, like that. So when I was driving along to start with, there was a rattle coming from over here. Now, I'm not sure if it's this or if it's this. When I was um, on the motorway, it was fine. And between coming off the motorway and getting home, it didn't do it. So I don't know if it's just stopped, I don't know what it was. But it's sort of coming, it was either this or this, one or the other, uh, and I'm not sure which. So what I'll probably do, I'm gonna take it out anyway, if I can get it out, because the steering controls don't work. Um, and I want to, I've got one of those driving cameras, so I'm going to put it in and plug it into the back. Um, 
someone's obviously tried to get that out there. I wonder if someone's tried to get it out when they when they um, part X the car and couldn't, so gave up and left it in there. Might be because when I fitted this one, Sean in the Isle of Wight said what he did was he took those took the things off. Uh, sorry about that. The um, the uh, battery ran out. So yeah, Sean in the Isle of Wight told me that he took out the clips that keep it in, and we just pushed in because it was nice and tight in the cage, and we thought at least when we need to get it out, we can. And I did that on the last one, and that was a top tip by Sean. So. Um, the people who fitted this may not have done this so i may be able to use the things to push in i may be able to just pull it out but as i say i want to plug in the camera and i want to see if it's got a module for the steering controls because i'd like to get the steering controls working if i can um flashing mileage uh so the flashing mileage is probably there oh i just noticed the oh that's the microphone that's a novel place to put it actually i always run it up and put it here for the phone but that's actually quite a good idea to put it there yeah um what was i saying yeah flashing mileage so the, the mileage might be flashing because whoever installed the stereo um because of course the original stereo is not here the mileage will flash until you do a proxy alignment so if they haven't got multi ecu scan they can't do it now it should clear it it might take a couple of goes but it usually will clear it uh, because obviously the blue and me is unplugged now we don't know whether the blue and me is knackered and that's why they put that in and we've got no way to, to try that but what i'm going to do is i'm going to take i'm going to take that panel off and have a look or at least release it and pull it back a little bit and peer in there and have a look and see if the blue and me is there i might actually try running multi ecu scan and seeing if it can connect to it which even though it's disconnected from the stereo because it's still connect if it's still connected um it should still show it so we'll know from we should hopefully know from that whether it's there or not um, if that is inconclusive, I'll take the back panel off and I'll actually take it out because I can keep it and uh, and then try it in a car that I need one in next, which will obviously save me money if it works because they're expensive. Um, nothing much else in the car. We've got a missing screw up there by the looks of it or a loose screw. Um, yeah, nothing else really to... So there's no burns or anything in the seats. Just a bit dirty. Just needs to clean. Um apart from that it's all good so we've got the logbook there i'm not going to show you it which shows the name of the person who lived in ashford um yeah i so say this came from a dealer I've forgotten the name of it now um but yeah it was it was quite clearly a part x um so i think that's about it so forty-five thousand miles 2013 lounge former cat in just turn the ignition off one key a couple of little bits to do no body work to do at all apart from maybe trying to push that over a little bit um, clean the engine up give it a service <sighs> do I put another battery in it I should do really shouldn't I because it's got the wrong one in it so really I should spend the money and get a new battery for it I keep that battery it's a, it looks almost new but it's the wrong one um, so these wires I think these are probably from the stereo why that one's disconnected, I don't know. Again, probably they were going to disconnect it. So rather than them doing it to the fuse box, they've got an inline fuse there and they've just wired it into the... Uh, well, that could be just... That, oh, that's going to be the permanent live, isn't it, I suppose? And they've run it through the bulkhead somewhere, which is pro <laughs> probably why that uh, roller tape is down there. I must remove that. Um, everything else under the bonnet, from what I can see, looks good. Yeah, can't see anything that springs out anyway. Hopefully we haven't got an oil leak. Uh, I will obviously inspect under the car. Um, oh, once I've moved the car out of the way, we'll know whether it's an oil leak or not. Hopefully there's not. Hopefully it's just, you know, it, it, it wasn't topped up or hasn't been checked since it was last serviced and it's used a bit of oil, which they do, of course. They do use a little bit of oil, so you know, that's why you need to check your oil. Um, there's no smell of boil burning oil or anything like that, so hopefully it's, uh, it's just something simple. Um, that is it, I think. So uh, let me tell you about the the, uh, the figures. Um, I am aware that I forgot to tell you about the figures on the uh, the blue car, and I will cover that in the, definitely cover that in the next video. Um, we have had two two videos for that car, uh, and I did forget to tell you, uh, but we will cover that. So I wasn't in the market for another car. I've still got my 500X. For some reason, it's not selling. I've reduced the price. I've now put it down. I initially put it up for nine and a half, which I thought I'd easily sell. Um, no interest. I've now put it down to 7995. No interest. 
I've got lots of people watching it on eBay, um, but no interest, not even an offer, which I'm really, I'm really surprised about. I'm really, really surprised. Um, having said that, um, Alex at Car Salvage 101, uh, been talking to him via Instagram, and he, he's, he's got two of his cars up for sale, um, cheap as well, and he hasn't been able to sell them. He did have someone coming today, uh, and someone who inquired about a black one with me, I've given the details of his car to her. She hasn't come back to me yet, so I don't know what the situation is with that, but hopefully. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if generally cars are not selling at the moment for some bizarre reason, cost of living crisis, but ULEZ, of course, around here. But, you know, these are ULEZ compliant, so... And of course that doesn't affect uh, where um, where Alex lives. But um, yeah, strange strange that I haven't sold the X, but what I was, what I was coming on to was, um, I wasn't in the market for another car at all. But I always look at Copart and BCA and see what's going through. And I do keep an eye on the, um, the, the previous, uh, previous write-offs because generally the people who are bidding on BCA who are dealers don't want them because it's the dealers that put them through. Um, so there's less people bidding on them, which is why I got this at a good price. Um, as I say, I wasn't in the market for one. I've, got the, I've still got the blue one, um, which I'm going to be working on today. Um, I've got the pearl one, which I've not really done that much to. I'll be getting back onto that one next week. So this one will be going on a back burner for a, a little while, not for long, because uh, there's not much to do. Um, it needs an MOT as well. MOT, either no, November, it's October now. It's the 17th, 18th of October today. Um, and it runs out, I think, 4th of November, something like that. So it, it's almost run out. So it, it needs MOT, uh, which I would have done anyway. But... Um, so I've got the blue one, got the pearl one, got the 500X, and of course I've got my BMW, which is my daily now anyway. So um, so I wasn't in the market for one. So the reason I bought this, um, I had a cheeky bid yesterday. Uh, yeah, yesterday. Bought it yesterday, paid for it yesterday afternoon, picked it up this morning. It's cracking. And no transport costs, of course, because I, apart from the £13.30 that it cost me for the train fare down to Paddockwood. Uh, it's a really easy journey, two trains uh, and a seven or eight minute walk brilliant um price i was think i was probably only up against one other person uh, and i got it for the hammer price of 1650 1650 it's a cracker their fees are lower than copart's um uh, and it came out at 1999 so call it two grand it was 199 pound 30 i think it was so call it two grand not bad is it so i reckon i can sell that for three and a half I think three and a half is a good price. I seem to sell a lot for about three and a half. Um, I think that's a good price, three and a half, especially with that low mileage. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna to have to spend very much on it. Cam belt's done. Service, what's the parts for a service? Less than 100 pounds. So service, clean the seats, uh, stereo, a little bit of work, but I don't think I'll have to spend any money. Camera, I've already got, although I've bought them before, you know, it's probably 12 quid or something like that. Um, that's it, basically. I don't think there's anything else I need to buy, unless anything else comes to mind. I've got to sort that headlight out, of course, but again, that doesn't cost me anything. I've got the brackets. If I haven't, actually, I'll check. If I haven't, I'll, um, I'll buy some. I think I've got a bracket for that side. Um, and that's it, and a good clean. So I've actually not got to spend any money on it, so I could potentially make a nice little profit out of this. Um, I know it's not really what the channel's about, this type of car, um, and I have done a well this is my third one like this now but I'm, I'm not going to do this all the time um, it's just that you know for a quick turnaround every now and again I'm going to buy one and of course it is still content for the channel and if anyone out there wants to do a similar thing the only problem with BCA is you have to be a trader or you have to have trade insurance sorry um, so you don't physically have to be a trader but you need to have trade insurance and you need to prove that when you open an account with them so you can't just register like you can with Copart and then buy a car that's the, that's the only issue um, but buying these former cat cars like this, as long as they've been done properly, which this one certainly appears to have been, and it seems to have been looked after, it's had added extras on it, it's a good buy. They must have given one more than 1650 in part exchange, mustn't they, on this? They must have done. Be interesting to know, but I don't suppose I'll ever find out. Although I have got the name, of course, on the logbook. Um, and I don't think there's an issue with BCA if you were to contact the, uh, unlike Copart, who don't like you, or well, part of their terms and conditions is you not contacting the former owner if you happen to find out who they are. Um, but BCA, I don't think there's a rule. They give you the logbook. It hasn't been redacted. So, um, yeah, it all, all seems good. So I might have a little Google, see if I can find her. You never know. 
and I can ask her then. Um, so that is your walk around. So yeah, one nine 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 pound thirty plus thirteen pounds train fare plus about 100 quid for service. I might stick a new battery in it, I don't know. So we're gonna spend less than 200 pounds, or an MOT as well, of course. So yeah, less than 250 pounds, we'll say. And a very quick turnaround. So I will see you on this car, probably in a couple of weeks, once I've finished uh, the, the blue one and, and Pearl. Um, of Pearl's not got much to do. And then we'll get stuck into this and get it finished really quick. Uh, hopefully, in uh, maybe even in one video, you never know. Um, but until then, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this car, Project Dicky, um, And we'll see you on the next one. So don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, click on the button, subscribe to the channel. Until the next one, as always, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. I'm out of here.